Hello, my name is Kyle Pugh with WebUcator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution that Yari's come up with on how to create an effective fiery texture within Photoshop. Yari's agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is also available as an article on his blog at the URL shown below. So let's take a look at the solution that Yari's come up with for creating a fiery texture within Photoshop. All right, so here I am inside of Photoshop. My first step to create this fiery effect is I need a canvas or a document open in front of me inside of Photoshop. This is going to be a simple little document, but I'll go up to my file menu. I'll go to new and I'm going to create a nice little square canvas here. 512 by 512 in pixels. And I'll leave the rest of the options here set the default 72 resolution RGB color mode, which is going to become very important to us here in a moment, 8 bit with an initial white background for the canvas. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And I've got my nice little square 512 by 512 pixel canvas. My next step within creating this fiery texture is I'm going to apply a filter to the background. And this filter is going to act as the base, the foundation of our fiery effect. Now within Yari's tutorial, Yari suggests that we use a filter called cloud difference. And this cloud difference filter will give us this base effect that we're going to utilize to create this fiery texture. So I'm going to go up to my filter menu just there at the top of the screen. Underneath filter, I'm then going to go to render. And I'm going to utilize the one called Difference Clouds. Found that we got some really nice texture, some really nice variation in the effect by utilizing this filter. So I'll go ahead and pick Cloud or Difference Clouds. And there we go. We've applied it to our canvas. Now, that looks pretty good. But you know what? I'm going to run the Cloud Difference a few more times here until I find a texture that really catches my eye, it gives me that feeling of perhaps a fiery explosion that's happening within my document. Uh, I could go right back up to filter to render and do the, the different clouds once again, uh, or shortcut key here. If you do control F on your keyboard, this will rerun that filter again and again, every time you hit control F. So I'm going to do this a few times just till I get settled on a particular texture or a difference in that black and white. I want nice strong contrast between white and black here and just overall a nice look to the pattern that gives me kind of that fiery explosion type of effect that I'm looking for. So I'm just running it here a few times, see if something catches my eye. And let's say I'm going to stick with, ooh, let's do it a couple more times. I like that one right there. Again, I got some nice contrast in white areas within there, some darker areas, and then some grays in between. You try it out a few times, control F, control F, till you settle upon something that you like within your document. So now I'm, I'm well on my way. I've got a nice texture going, but it's black and white. You think of fire, right? I want, I want to get some nice reds in there. I want to get some nice oranges and yellows and perhaps some hot spots in there with that, with the white. So uh, I'm now going to play around with the colors that are making up this image. Specifically, we're going to play with the, the uh, curves of this document that make up the RGB channels or the RGB colors. So I'm going to go up to my image menu, top of the screen. I'll go into adjustments and I'm going to go to curves. So currently inside my curves window, my channels are RGB. So anything that I change at this, this point within my, my curves is going to affect all three channels, all three colors. Uh, I'm going to affect each of them individually. So I'll go in there and I'm going to work with red first. Think of fire, right? I want a lot of red. Lots, lots of strong red inside of here. So I'm going to grab the red curve and I'm going to bring that up at the top. I want red to really shoot up, right? Be a nice strong reds in there and then plateau at the top. I'm now going to hop in and do a little bit with green. See with green, I want that one to start out kind of low. You can watch there in the background. Right now I've got kind of a purple color happening in there. And then I want red, I want green to really come on strong at the end. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. I'm starting to get some of those yellows within there. 
Now let's play with one more color here. I'm going to go to blue. And for blue, you know, it's not really a fire color. Right? It's, 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 a, it's a cooler color. So I want blue to really be down low. I don't want a whole lot of blue within this image here. Let's undo that there. So we'll grab that and just drag that down. So now I'm starting to show off some more of that red. Got some nice contrast in there with the, the yellow and oranges. You know what? I'm not quite just happy yet. Let's play around with the, the red just a little bit more here. Let's see what I get as I move that there. Oh, that was looking good right there. So I'm just moving that curve around with red to get some more red color happening and there gets the nice strong contrast as well. So I'm feeling pretty good about this, changing the channels within the colors. I'll hit OK. Now that's looking pretty good. That's a nice fiery effect, right? But you know what? We're not done yet. Let's push this even further. So I'm now going to create a new layer here, just a new blank layer. And what I'm going to apply now is a radial gradient. I want to get some nice soft edges around this, this texture that we're generating. So now within my Photoshop tools, I'm going to hop over to my gradient tool. And I'm going to make sure it's set to a radial gradient. I'm utilizing the white and black still. And I'm just going to go from the center of my document and I'm going to drag up. And once I get to the edge of that document, I'll let go. And I've now got a nice white to black radial gradient. But you know what? What did I do that for? That didn't do a whole lot. Now that's all I see within this document. Well, we're now going to apply a layer mode to this gradient that we have in there to help create a transition, a nice smooth edge around that fiery effect that we have in the background. So with my new layer selected there, I'm going to go to my blending mode, which is currently normal, and I'm going to change that to multiply. And you could try playing around with the other settings in here. We just found that multiply gives us a nice soft effect that we're looking to get out of this fiery texture that we're creating. Nice soft edges now blending from that white to the black or from the fiery effect out to black to nothing. Nice kind of explosion within this fiery effect that we're creating here. Now I am going to do one more thing. Think of fire once again. We got colors in there, but also fire's fire's not sharp, right? It's not not hard edges. It's soft, right? Think of that flame flickering. So looking at this texture here, there's a lot of hard edges, sharp edges within it. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to take my background where that fire effect is at. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'll call this, perhaps I'll call it fire blur because I'm going to apply a blur effect to this new layer to give us those softer edges, not so sharp and hard. So with that fire blur layer selected, I'm going to apply one more filter. This time I'm going to go into my blur. I'm going to do a Gaussian blur. And we can play around with the settings in here. Currently I've got a radius of three pixels and you can see it's really blurred out in there. If I turn the preview off, you see the hard edges we get out of there. I turn it back on. Much softer edges in there. So I've applied, I'm going to stick with three. You can play around with the numbers, see what you get. You don't want to get blurred out too much, but you want to get some blur in there. I'll hit OK. Now, I think it's, it's perhaps too blurred out. I do want some contrast in there. It shouldn't just be a, a smudge that's happened over this flame. But I, want, I do want to contrast it with some sharp, sharp edges. So I'm going to do one more layer mode, but this time on the fire blur. I'll change my layer blending mode from normal. This time I'm going to choose lighten. So those darker edges will be nice and blurred, but the lighten feature here will blend these two layers and it'll give me the lighter. So the background where it's lighter, those will show through as, as sharper edges and give us that nice contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Lighten. Look at that. That's looking great. And I've got some nice blurred edges in there and also where those lighter areas come up, some stronger contrast to the sharp edge. Now it's looking pretty slick. So creating a fiery texture within Photoshop. I like to thank Yari for coming up with a solution and allowing us to create this video for your entertainment, for your pleasure.
Hopefully you picked up some, some new techniques that you can utilize within Photoshop to be able to create these, these super slick textures. Feel free to visit Yari's blog uh, at his main page and see all the other little goodies that he's got out there on his site.